Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to come video, let's discuss Intel's i9 series of processors, shall we? That is right, i9, not i7, although there are those two. This is, of course, part of Intel's HEDT platform, also known as Basin Falls, or if you prefer, X299. A series of leaks have popped up over the past 24 or so hours, and, well, it paints a rather interesting picture for Intel. So we're going to be going through that um, series of leaks as well as, well, my general thoughts on it. So first of all, let's go through the processes as well as where the sources pop up. So they originate from Anantech, although there are also various benchmarks which have also popped up publicly, although we'll go into those in just a moment. Let's first of all get an overview of the actual processor and the specifications. So the high end is an i9 7920X. Now this is not going to be released until August, which is notably later than the other processors, all of which are going to be released in June. So do know that if I say the 7900X, 7820X and so on, all of those come out in June, but the 7920X is going to be released in August. Now this part is 12 cores, 24 threads, with a whopping 16.5 megabytes of level 3 cache and 44 PCIe lanes. Which, by the way, the only thing we don't know about this processor is the clock speed, which is kind of weird. But the other processors are rather interesting. The 7900X has 10 cores, 20 threads, 13.75 megabytes of level uh, 3 cache, 44 PCIe lanes, and has three clocks, which you need to take note of. A base clock, a turbo clock 2.0 and a turbo clock 3.0. So this essentially is different states that the clocks are, that the core can uh, run at based upon the usual criteria: heat, power consumption, and so on and so on. Speaking of those type of things, it's quite interesting to note that there is going to be 112 watts for KB Lake X and 160 for Sky Lake X. One final thing: all of the i9s are going to be Skylake X, whereas KB Lake X is going to be relegated squarely and purely to four core uh, models. Now this is where things get a bit strange. There are a couple of different uh, variants with the processor. All of the i9 processors, also once again known as Skylake X, feature AVX512 instructions enabled. However, it does not appear to be the case for the KB Lake processors, also known as i7. Furthermore, just to clarify, Skylake X parts support quad channel memory, DDR4, up to 6667 MHz, whereas KB Lake X supports a dual channel. So, once again, it would appear that KB Lake X is the entry level, the cheap way to get into the X299 platform. Now, Here's where things get a little more interesting in terms of performance. If you take a look at the user benchmark website, there are results already for both the 10 and the 12 core Skylake X processors. Now, it's very interesting because if you were to take a look at the results of the 12 core, you're looking at 268%, also known as 1791 points, if you are referring, of course, to multi-core, whereas single core is 105 points, uh, sorry, 131 points um, for the 12 core model, 10 core model, 107 points, whereas the multi-core for the, once again, the 10 core processor hits 1467 which is very impressive, and the turbo, however, for the 12-core model is hitting 3.05 GHz, so basically 3050 MHz, once again, assuming that this is being uh, accurately assessed by the benchmark. There are numerous reports that are floating around the internet that, in terms of Skylake X, we don't have so much overclocking results, but KB Lake X supposedly does overclock very well. I'm hearing up to 5 GHz is basically a guarantee. I'd like to, of course, add that nothing is guaranteed until we get the, you know, a large sample size of retail chips, but assuming this is accurate, it does paint an interesting picture for entry-level models of X299. The problem is, 
I don't know how many people are going to really want to put the money down for such a board because, well, you're looking at around 100, 150, 200, uh, depending obviously on your currency, what model of the board you're going for as a premium, as above like, let's say the 200 series. Another problem, and I know I'm sounding kind of negative here, but hey, I'm being honest, is Intel's own Coffee Lake CPUs. Yes, of course, AMD is Ryzen, but quite frankly, I don't want to discuss AMD in this video because it's well outside it. It gets way too complex because you've got Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and that is not including the HEDT platform, which is being constantly rumored. There's, uh, you know, multiple videos we've done on it, and some of the rumors peg it up to 16 cores, 32 threads for the HEDT market, which is basically aiming at this, but... Obviously, that's just getting way too complex. So I just want to keep this Intel versus Intel for this particular video. Coffee Lake pushes the number of cores to six uh, cores, 12 threads. But that is on a completely different series of process. Uh, I'm sorry, on a completely different chipset. That's the 300 series board. Because, well, of course it is. It's Intel. Uh, we don't have a solid release date at the moment, but it's supposedly going to be launching this year. And there are some reports that it's going to be able to run on a 200 series board, assuming, of course, the manufacturer in question does decide to release a BIOS update. The, re the reason I'm bringing this in is that you're going to have a very interesting uh, series of questions you have to ask yourself. What application are you going to run? Is it going to be clock speed sensitive? And is it going to scale well linearly with multiple cores? Quite frankly, it's going to be really weird to buy an Intel CPU for some time now. And I know the purpose of this processor, the 7740K and the 7640K, primarily is, well, a very simple one. It's to lure you in to that particular platform. And I'm not saying that it's a bad chip. I think in some respects it could be very tempting. This is particularly true, by the way, if you are someone who wants to overclock to the absolute hilt and this CPU does do that. The other way to look at it, once again, according to the leaks, is that you've got that extra I.O., the extra connectivity of this particular board. So if I.O. is very important to you, Basin Falls could well be the process of you. But if you're just gaming or doing basic applications, then perhaps Basin Falls is going to be somewhat less of your cup of tea, if you will. Quite frankly, I'm going to be very curious how the market receives, not necessarily Basin Falls as a whole, so by which I mean, of course, X299. I'm more referring to the 7740K and its little brother, the 7640K, and what type of niche they're going to put in. Personally, I've always found it a bit of a, a, a false economy, a bit of a fallacy to say, well, you know what, I'm going to buy a... Uh, lower end processor now and then I'm going to upgrade in the future if I need it. I, I never found that I've done that. There are a couple of instances that I've kind of done it but they've always been unplanned because you know it just kind of is what it is. What I typically find is that in many instances by the time I'm kind of like eh, I should probably upgrade to a processor my system set up and I think you know what I'm just going to wait a couple of months and you know, a new CPU launch is going to happen and I'll just go for it then. This is particularly true if you've got a HEDT platform. What I mean by that is that folks who buy these type of processors, not always of course, but f folks who typically become invested in HEDT are not just gamers, they're typically also enthusiasts to do other things. For example, they might decide to do a lot of 3D rendering work or whatever, and those individuals are also going to require a lot of extra threads anyway. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how this goes. However, there is one thing for sure. The price gap between, oh, let's say the uh, low end, uh, let's say the KB Lake X's, all the way up to the, even to the mid-range Skylake X's, is going to be quite uh, substantial. Therefore, if pennies do matter, then you might well be better to save it. However, if you're on such a tight budget, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, I'm just being kind of honest, I would personally rather go with a 200 series board unless I.O. or some of the other features of X299 really matter, and I would rather go with a 200 series, and, well, this kind of is what it is. So this could be very interesting. Regardless, I'm very look much looking forward to seeing what Coffee Lake brings to the mainstream. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. 
I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.